doesn't really have time to affect and oxidize and take the caviar. But if you do keep a spoon sitting in the t jar, you do want to make sure that it's either um, plastic or pearl or horn bone. Um, people try to use wood, but wood is also super absorbent and that can really get a lot of the oils up too. So, um, so yeah, we're going to taste through. This flight is an amazing flight to have anywhere from the range of Hackleback to White Sturgeon to Golden Ocetra, which is like our top product. So we're going to start with the Hackleback and I'll let Becca kind of take it from here. Perfect. Well, one, that was the best cooking demo I think I've ever seen. I mean, I would like to have Chef Suzette in my kitchen at all times, I think, because I don't think I, I would never ruin a dish ever again. The saying a lot. Okay, yeah, 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 I, I have faith. <laughs> well, I appreciate that, Pedro. <laughs> it looks like um, your husband, Alex Hig Higby, is going to ask you to make that dish tonight. So good luck with that one. <laughs> I saw that. I'm not yeah. making it home till late, Alex. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it sucks. Okay. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so let's start with the Hackleback. Um, walk Perfect. us through that one. And it's such a cool product that it's one of our best sellers for sure. And um a favorite so absolutely this is by far my dad's favorite product um it also really helps me because it doesn't totally break my bank account so it's like my go-to if my dad has anything you know father's day is coming up i'll probably take him some caviar at home and he loves this stuff um this is definitely a fan favorite obviously um so the hackleback is pretty much known to always have these really, really small eggs. And at first, I'll just kind of assume that it's because the sturgeon was really young. But actually, it's pretty interesting because this sturgeon, the hackleback, is just extremely small. So it's only going to be about six pounds um, at its heaviest. And it will only be about two and a half feet long, where Petra will later tell a little bit more about the white sturgeon. But the white sturgeon is what, I mean, I want to say six feet long. Yeah, six to eight feet. And yeah, two hundred fifty pounds. Yeah, so that surgeon is huge compared to these little baby guys. They're six pounds, and <laughs> and so they're awesome. Um, we do get this. This is gonna be one of the last wild caviars you can get on the market. It's kind of known to be the last American wild caviar. Um, because it has the highest population amongst the sturgeon species. So it will be the last commercially fished caviar as well. Um, but it's just all around, you know, fantastic. And so we do usually get this specifically. Um, it is native to the Mississippi and Missouri rivers. We get ours primarily from like the Illinois area around those rivers. So um, that's definitely, but you can get it from almost all of the states that you know Mississippi runs through so it's pretty cool it's definitely a very interesting cool species and they're fun and for like flavor profiles it's really interesting because um chef Suzette mentioned earlier you know the word dirt is not yeah. a very obviously a very pretty word to use but what's really interesting with this wild caviar it is just like terroir and wine and you really mm -hmm. can pick up like sturgeon eat off the bottom of the rivers and you can really pick up on that earth and minerality here which mm -hmm. um is a really cool experience because you don't get that that's what makes a wild caviar so special now is to get that terroir almost as mm -hmm. opposed to like a farmed caviar yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And so, you know, this is definitely going to be, I like to say this is a really good starting caviar. So if anyone ever comes into the store and they're a little scared, they're like, oh, well, I don't like fish or whatnot. Um, I usually will either direct them towards a hackleback or a white sturgeon, just because the hackleback will have a little bit of brightness, but it'll be very subtle. Um, and you really get that, you know, that caviar essence of it. Yeah. So uh, definitely go ahead and taste that, guys. I don't know if you're doing your caviar bumps like we've shown you in the past, but make sure your hands are clean. Um, I... <laughs> Becca is doing a dip right this. now. So she'll see so you just put the caviar right on the back of your fist. And this allows you to see it up close. You can smell it. And um, we say that little bit of body temperature from your hand is almost like like aerating wine. You know, it brings all the oils come out. Like if you taste something that's too hot or too cold, you don't get the full flavors. And so this allows the oils to really to come out and go ahead and show us this caviar bump. Oh, <laughs> So that's how you do it. So cheers, everyone, for those of you that are on the Hackleback right now. Um, let us know your feedback. I see one yum already. But yeah, <laughs> it's such a good 
pleaser. It's consistent. It's always like a small jet black egg. But whenever you have it on your hand, you can really inspect it and look to make sure all the eggs are um, uniform. And that so that way, you know, it all comes from the same batch because it should. Whenever it comes from one jar, it should all be the same fish. Yeah. 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 It's definitely for this. I love this egg. It's definitely one of my favorites. Um, and it, yeah, again, it always looks very uniform. So it's really good if for a chef, if they need to like contrast something on a dish, I always say, you know, go with a hackleback because the black will really bring out all the other colors on a dish. If any of you guys want to do something really professional and really fancy looking, definitely hackleback is your, th is your thing. And it's a fun caviar to play with. So um, I will now I'll take you guys to the royal white sturgeon. But Becca, I'm going to keep you on so you can like oh. talk to me about it. <laughs> okay, great. Thanks. For yeah. those of you who don't know, um, <laughs> She's such a good sport, Becca. I put her on the spot all the time. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I thought, here you go. Here's a little catch. You can stay in and tr have the royal white sturgeon with me, too. Okay. So the next one is the royal white sturgeon, which is uh, it's kind of the red wave, which is kind of it's our signature caviar, I would say. This is like, mm -hmm. you know, the red in brand with everything else. This caviar is so cool because it is native to the San Francisco Bay. So whenever Saskia and I first started our caviar company, we would we would be talking to people about it. And every, you know, a lot of the time we would have a response like, Oh, well, you know, only good caviar comes from Russia. And, and we just have to sit there and smile and you know to each their own everyone has their opinion and there is excellent caviar coming from russia don't get me wrong mm -hmm. but we're super proud that we have this excellent local product you know native to our backyard swims in the san francisco bay and then their sturgeon are and draw and becca and, help me oh man why and, andromedus or andromedus Andron they they live in like salt water but then they spawn in fresh water mm -hmm. so then they'll go up the delta and the sacramento river to spawn but this is farm so it's coming from a farm outside of sacramento it's a really cool farm because they they have been in this they're kind of the pioneers of sustainable fish farming they're one of the first farms in the u.s and have really made a significant positive impact on sturgeon on the sturgeon species and and so we have a lot of respect for that and i used to work there and these fish i i was able to like be a part of the processing and the spawning i got to go fertilize the eggs you know I, we we would early in the morning with really cold water fit, mixing up the sperm and the new eggs and then seven days later they would hatch and and so what, actually what we're having now could be from when i was working there the oh, fish yeah. that, I helped um, fertilize, I guess. <laughs> so anyway, so and the white sturgeon is really, this one is like a crowd pleaser. People come in and they say, I want to get caviar, kind of middle price point. I don't know what their preferences are, whether they prefer more salinity or creamy or buttery. This one, we really recommend the white sturgeon a lot because it is such a crowd pleaser too. It's on the mild side, but it's so creamy and easy to eat. Like you can eat this right out of the jar. Oh, yeah. Super, you know, no questions asked. Or you can put on potato chips. Or you can, you know, do it with a really beautiful avocado roulade. And um, so it's a pleaser all around. So I'm going to eat it off the back of my fist as well, just to really look at the eggs and kind of, you know, see you the size. Go ahead, Becca. Did you wash your hands? Of course. I have, okay. actually. <laughs> I, even better. I have our hand sanitizer right oh. here. Wait, hey, I love um, <laughs> we, we were going to launch this last week and we've decided we we took a little pause and we'll have it ready for pre-order this upcoming next week and should hopefully uh receive the product by um by the end of next week so uh i know i, I talked about it last tasting but again like we kind of had a little bit of a delay after last week and we'll be we'll make sure and let you guys know whenever this is available but so cheers on the white sturgeon cheers <laughs> So it has a little bit of salinity, buttery, creamy. Mm -hmm. Goodness, this is a huge fish. It gets up to 250 pounds and yields about 20% of its body weight in caviar, which is Lost. awesome. It's a lot bigger yeah. than Becca's hackleback. But the yeah. hackleback is really good. <laughs> big. <laughs> so, Becca, I'm going to say goodbye to you and bring Hope on. Okay. So, See you later, bye. guys. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Okay, Hope, um, if you're available, if you can send your request, I will bring you on to talk about 
the last and most special caviar. Um, you know, this is the Golden Ocetra. We were, we've been waiting to bring on the Golden Ocetra because so this is our fifth flight of the series. And, you know, we're just trying to figure out a good balance and fun and exciting times to bring on at different flights. And but we also want to make sure and have the experience of everything being so visually different and the different flavors. I see Rick, he's like our biggest Ocetra fan. He's he's a pure Ocetra guy, which I I totally respect. Um, while I'm waiting on Hope to join us, um, I can hear the buzzer going in the storeroom. So we might have a customer in the store that's getting helped right now. So, um, but so this is your most traditional caviar that you can get. And something that's really important with Ocetra, a lot of people, you know, we, we call ours Russian Ocetra. Like it is a true Russian Ocetra. And the reason why we call it that is because its lineage comes from the Caspian Sea in Russia. But these days, nothing actually comes from Russia, uh, from the Caspian Sea. So we can get Russian Ocetra from, uh, from Italy, Poland, Bulgaria, Uruguay, which is really interesting because um, the sturgeon species is actually not native to the Southern Hemisphere, but there's a really great farm in Uruguay. Hi, Hope. I like your bandana. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so, about um, yeah, I, I, I like yours too. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> but, um, so I'll let you kind of pick up where I left off of talking about the Ocetra and that where it comes from so many different places, but as long as the heritage is coming from the Caspian Sea, that's why we call it a Russian Ocetra. Definitely. Um, so the Russian Ocetra, I'm not sure if you touched on this, is one of the three native Caspian Sea sturgeon, the other two being the Beluga and the Savruga. So we are getting our um, golden Ocetra from a farm in Israel. And this is really cool because it is one of the longest running fish farms in Israel from Kibbutz Dan. And um, so as Pedro was saying, you know, even though it is farmed in Israel, it is actually considered a true Russian Ocetra because the lineage comes from uh, the Caspian Sea. And um, what's really amazing about this caviar is that it spawns at 18 to 20 years, which is, I think is so crazy. Uh, and so this caviar is um, actually, the Russian Ocetra was facing extinction and was classified as endangered in 1996, which is really sad and is why it is sustainably farmed all around the world now. And you'll notice that these eggs are going to be lighter in color. It has this bright golden to light amber and medium to large sized egg. This is what makes it one of the rarest um, caviar right now. If you want to taste some, I'm going to actually take a spoonful right now. Um, wow. So that one's just so rich and decadent because it is such an old fish. Um, it really has, you know, over time we get a little bit more fats and more flavor as we age. And the same thing with, with the caviar, you know, as the fish get older, more fats, more richness, and it, it directly reflects onto the, into the quality of the caviar. Definitely. And something that we really like to compare this golden Ocetra to is Kobe beef because it's very decadent. Yes, and Kobe beef, just like it's meaty, rich, and also has those fats that make it really, really nice. So, yeah, well, thank you, Hope. I know you just had to run around <laughs> to make it onto the screen, but you you light, brightened it up, and thank you for, for joining me. And we, um, if you guys have questions, make sure you, you post them below. We have one minute left until we get cut off. I hope you guys don't feel like we got rushed through, and if we can send any more information, let me know. And the want to announce that we'll have our next flight in two weeks with Chef Kyle Connaughton from Single Thread, which is really exciting to be able to see in his amazing kitchen and see what he's coming up with. 